Hello, and welcome to Algebra 1, SOL Prep, Week 3, Functions. A relation is a function if, in pairs of x and y, each input, or x, has exactly one output, or y. In other words, x cannot repeat, while y can repeat. In graphs, you can slide a vertical line left to right over the graph, touching only a single point on the graph at a time, passes the vertical line test. Examples. Number one, identify which relations below are functions. So in A, I'm looking at the x's, and I'm looking to see, do any of the x's repeat? Because the x's can not repeat. And I see, here's an x that's 25, and here's the next that's 25, going with two different y values. So therefore, this relation is not a function. In B, I'm looking at all the x's, and I see that they are all different. This is a function. Again, but in a table, I'm looking at the x's. I notice that here the x is 14, and again the x is 14, going with two different y values. Therefore, this is not a function. In D, I'm looking at a graph. So I'm thinking about the vertical line test. Is there anywhere I can draw a vertical line that touches more than one point? And the answer is no. Anywhere I pass a vertical line, only one point is crossed. Anywhere I put this vertical line in the graph, it only touches one point. So passing the vertical line test, makes this relation a function. But in E, notice when I take the vertical line, here it only touches a point, here it only touches a point, here it only touches one point, but here it touches two points. That is not a function because this x value of four goes with two different y values. The x is repeating. In example F, I notice that each of these x values go only to one y value. Therefore, this is a function. How do I know these are x values? Because the x is the input, and the input goes first. The y is the output. What do we get after? The y goes next. In this one, I notice that the negative 5 is going to two different y values. Negative 5 goes to 3, and negative 5 goes to negative 3. Therefore, g is not a function. Domain and range. Domain is all the x values. Range is all the y values. Number two, state the domain and range of each function below. In choice, in example a, if I'm looking for the domain, I'm looking for all of the x values. So I'm going to write the x values in a list in a set. This is the domain. The range is the y values, and here are all the y values. So I'm going to list the y values. Usually we list them from least to greatest. So I'm going to start with negative three, Negative 1 comes next, and because I have 5 twice, I'm only going to write it once. It's the distinct values I'm looking for. In example B, the domain is the x, and here is the x. So I'm going to list all of these x values, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. This is the domain. The range is the y, and these are the y values. Again, I'll list them in order from least to greatest. Negative three, one, two, four, and five. Example C, input is x, and x comes first, so this is the domain. The domain is x, negative three, negative one, seven, nine, and 14. The range is the y, and y comes after y is the output. So listing these in order from least to greatest, 0, 3, 6, 10, and 15. In D, 
I'm again looking for the x when I'm looking for domain. So looking at these points, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4 is the first x value we see that goes with this point, then negative 2, then 0. This point goes with 2, and 3, 4, 5. This point goes with 5. The range is the y values. And for y values, I'm starting at the lowest point. This point goes with negative 2. Moving up, I see 1. Up to the next one, 2. And I see 2 goes with 2 points, but I'm only looking for the distinct y value, not how many times I have it. And then 3, 4 goes with that one. That's the range. On a graph like E, I'm looking for the domain, which is the x, and the x-axis, remember, that goes right and left. So when I look to the left of this graph, I see an arrow, which means to the left the graph goes forever. I'm looking to the right of this graph, and I see an arrow, so the graph also goes forever. When it goes forever in both directions, we call the domain all real numbers. This is the fancy way that you'll tend to see it the set of x values such that x is an element of the all real numbers, this fancy bold r for all real numbers. Since the range is the y and the y goes up and down, I'm looking how far down does this graph go? And the lowest that I see the graph is here, negative 2. There is a point there at negative 2. And then I look going up and again, I see arrows at the top of the graph, so the graph just keeps going up. So I say the range, the y values, are the set of y such that y are greater than or equal to negative 2. X-intercept is the point where the graph touches the x-axis written as the x value comma zero. X intercepts also mean zeros, roots, and solutions. This is very important that these are all synonyms. X intercepts mean zeros, roots, and solutions. The y intercept is the point where the graph touches the y axis, which is written as zero, comma, and then the y value. For these examples, we will state the x and y intercepts of the functions below. So in the graph, when I'm looking for the x-intercept, I'm looking where does the graph touch the x-axis. That happens at negative 1, so I write negative 1, 0, because the y-value is 0 at that location. The y-intercept is where the graph touches the y-axis, which is right here at 0, 3. In example B, I'm not given a graph, so I'll have to do this a different way. We'll find the x-intercept by remembering that that means the y is 0. So 3x and then getting rid of this makes 3x equal to 12. Why do we get rid of this? Because the y is 0. Divide both sides by 3 and x equals 4. So the x-intercept is 4 comma 0. For the y-intercept, I'm going to cover up or make the x term 0. So what do I have left? Negative 2y equals 12. Divide both sides of the equation by negative 2, and y equals negative 6. So the y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 6. Number 4, state the zeros of the function below. So I remember that zeros means x-intercepts. And x-intercepts is where the graph touches the x-axis. So I look everywhere that happens. I see here, here, and here. So the first zero is at 1, 2, 3, negative 3. The next one is at the origin, 0, 0. And finally at positive 3, 0.
Evaluate functions at a point or identifying if a point is a member of a function. Since y equals f of x, we will usually type the function into y equals in the calculator. Press second graph and match the x value with the corresponding y value in the table. Let's look at these examples. Number five, given f of x equals x squared plus 4x minus 8, evaluate f of negative 2. So remember that f of x is another way to say y. Let's go ahead to the calculator, and we will plug this in to the y equals. I'll press y equals. If there's something there, I will press clear, and then type the function x squared plus 4x minus 8. Now I press second graph. That gives me the table. Second graph. And I look for when x is negative 2. That's what this means, that the x is negative 2. So looking at the table, when the x is negative 2, I see that the y says negative 12. So now I know how to answer this by matching it in the table. Negative 12. Number six, is the point 1, negative 3 a member of the function f of x equals x squared plus 4x minus 8? So again, f of x means y. So back to my graph, remember this is the same one that we just typed in to y equals. But now I'm looking to see if 1 goes with negative 3. And in the table, I see that 1 matches to negative 3. That input does go with that output. So is this point a member of the function? Yes, because I saw it in the table. Thanks for watching. Have fun practicing.